The importance of linear algebra in machine learning may sometimes seem implicit, as mostly we learn these concepts such as vector and matrix in a math context while discarding the link to their applications in machine learning. In fact, linear algebra has several foundational use cases in machine learning, including data representation, dimensionality reduction, and vector embedding. In this video, we will build a fundamental view of linear algebra for ML by introducing its application in data representation, starting from basic concepts, the definition scalar, vector, matrix, tensor. Math operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, dot product, and other matrix transformation including reshape, transpose, and inverse. We will talk about how to implement them in Python and their applications in machine learning algorithms such as linear regression and neural networks. If you would like to read the blog post that covers these concepts in more details, please check out the link in the description. Firstly, let's define the building blocks of linear algebra, which are scalar, vector, matrix, and tensor. Scalar is a single number. Vector is an one-dimensional array of numbers. To create a vector, we use number py array and passing a list as the vector elements. Matrix is a two-dimensional array of numbers, and we use nested list to create a matrix. Tensor is multidimensional, which can be created by layering multiple nested lists together. This video will primarily focus on vectors and matrices. Similar to how we perform mathematical operations on numbers, the same logic also works for matrices and vectors. However, please note that these operations on matrices have restrictions on two matrices being the same size. This is because they are performed in an element-wise manner, and this is as different from matrix.product. For example, to add two matrices together, we follow the syntax of matrix 1 plus matrix 2 in Python. Now let us put more emphasis on matrix.product. Dot .product is often being confused with matrix element-wise multiplication. In fact, it is a more commonly used operation on matrices and vectors. Dot product operates by iteratively multiplying each row of the first matrix to the column of the second matrix one element at a time. For example, the dot product between the first row of the matrix 1 and the first column of the matrix 2 forms the upper left cell in the output matrix. This is achieved by multiplying the orange elements and the blue elements, then add them together. Dot product operation necessitates the number of columns in the first matrix matching the number of rows in the second matrix and the order of the matrices in the operations is crucial. We use the dot method to execute the dot product. Now let's talk about other common transformations applied to vector and matrix. A vector is often seen as a matrix with one column and it can be reshaped into matrix format by specifying the number of columns and rows using the reshape method. We can also reshape the matrix into a different layout. For example, we can use reshape 41 to transform the 2 by 2 matrix into 4 rows and 1 column. Reshaping matrices can be widely applied in neural network in order to fit the data into the neural network architecture. Transpose swaps the rows and columns of the matrix, so in this example a 3 by 2 matrix changes into a 2 by 3 matrix. To transpose a matrix, we simply apply dot t to the matrix. Inverse is an important transformation of matrices, as it is applied to solve the linear equation system. But to understand inverse matrix we first need to address what is an identity matrix. An identity matrix requires the number of columns and rows to be the same and all the diagonal elements to be one. Additionally, a matrix or vector remains the same after multiplying its corresponding identity matrix. Here is an example of two by two identity matrix. The dot product of the matrix itself, the one in blue, and the inverse of the matrix, the one in yellow, is the identity matrix. There are two things to take into consideration with matrix inverse, 
Firstly the order of the matrix and matrix inverse does not matter even though most matrix dot products are different when the order changes. Secondly, not all matrices have an inverse. To compute inverse of the matrix, we can use linear algebra inverse function specified here. Now let's talk about why these concepts are useful in the machine learning context. We will start with linear regression, then generalize it to neural networks. This video will skip the fundamentals of the algorithms. If you would like to know more about regression models, I have a video that talks about top regression algorithms in machine learning. Please check it out if you are interested. Suppose that we have a dataset with n features and m instances. These features all contribute to the predictions of y to some extent. We typically represent linear regression as the weighted sum of these features. Higher weights indicate more contribution to the predictions. What if we represent this formula using the matrix form, starting from using one instance as an example? We can store the feature values of the instance in a matrix and the weights are stored in a vector. Then we multiply the element with the same color and add them together to get the weighted sum formula. When the number of instances increase, we naturally think of using for loop to iterate an item at a time which can be time-consuming. Instead, we can package all instances into a matrix. By representing the algorithm in the matrix format, the linear regression optimization process boils down to solving the coefficient vector w0, w1, w2 to wn through linear algebra operations. To solve the weight vector, let us represent the coefficient matrix as m, variable vector as v, and output vector as y then multiply both sides of the equation by inverse of the matrix m. Since the dot product between inverse of the matrix and the matrix itself is the identity matrix, we can simplify the solution of the linear equation system as the dot product between the inverse of the coefficient matrix m and the output vector y. By representing the linear regression systems using matrices, this increased the computational speed significantly. This may seem to be a small enhancement for such a simple system, but if we expand it to machine learning or even deep learning that consists of massive amount of systems like this, it makes drastic increase in efficiency. Neural network is composed of multiple layers of interconnected nodes where the outputs of nodes from the previous layers are weighted and then aggregated to form the input of the subsequent layers. If we zoom into the interconnected layer of a neural network, we can see some components of the regression model. Take a simple example from a neural network that we visualize the inner process of the hidden layer I, with node I1, I2, I3, and hidden layer J, with node J1, J2. W11 represents the weight of the input node I1 that feeds into the node J1, and W21 represents the weight of input node I2 that feeds into node J1. In this case, we can package the weights into 3 by 2 matrix. This can be generalized to thousands or even millions of instances, which forms the massive training dataset of neural network models. Now this process resembles how we represent the linear regression model except that we will use a matrix to store the weights instead of a vector, but the principle remains the same. To take a step further, we can expand this to deep neural networks for deep learning. This is where tensor come into play to represent data with more than two dimensions. For example, in convolutional neural network, we use 3D tensor for image pixels, as they are often depicted through three different channels such as red, green, blue color channel. As you can see, linear algebra act as the building block in machine learning and deep learning algorithms, and this is just one of the multiple use cases of linear algebra in data science. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Look forward to see you in the next one.